Reds are proud to announce that Conor Tinian will be the skipper for the new season. Conor, your reaction to the news that we've all been hoping for? First of all, that you're uh, staying with the club and then coming back as skipper. Yeah, no, I'm delighted really. It's obviously our intent secret that last year's been a difficult season and we, I think everyone's done a bit of soul searching since, but obviously you've spoken to Danny since he's come in. Um, fully on board with what he's, he's coming in with a lot of fresh ideas and what have you. Um, I think it's just more than anything excited to feel like it. Exactly what we needed and wanted to be a part of that, and then obviously just very proud that Danny also asked me to be captain as well. It's probably something that I haven't thought a lot about when I was younger and never wanted it to be a captain when I was younger. Um, I think a few people have probably seen that I haven't always maybe had the attributes as captain uh, in a few years gone by, but as, it, as I've got older, it's something that I've definitely. Um, wanted and were under gas and what have you, something that I was fine to do. So yeah, more than anything, just proud to stay, but um, to be asked and grateful to be asked. Well, I think on the, you know, on the basis of the last few seasons, uh, it's something that you certainly deserve. And I think with the, the new management structure, um, Danny, Gaz and, and Rudd, they, they've all captained teams before, so they obviously feel, you know, you've got it in you, you know, to do the job. No, I think, well, I think we've lost a few more senior players um, and I, I don't see it as myself, I think a few of us need to step up to that plate. Gaz, I've played ahead of Gaz for um, a lot of years and I'll be different to Gaz as a captain, I'm sure. Um, I, I know better than anyone if you don't track your man, you'd get a rollicking and whether, whether I'll have the same size or not, I'm not sure, but I'd like to think I've learned of captains I've played under, but like I say, it's a, um, it's a compliment really that Danny, my dad's always watched Carlisle and speaks highly of Danny as a, as a player and he's obviously captain Carlisle for a lot of years, so yeah, it's a compliment if anything, but like I say, I don't just see it as me, um, yeah, I'll be where, I'll hopefully have the armband and whatever you, but I don't just see it as something that is me and everyone else to drag everyone up. There's got to be a few of us that we've, we've lost some big characters and Gaz moving from player to, I know he's still signs a player, but looking like more into the back backroom staff. We're going to have to fill that void and obviously Aaron Taylor and what have you. And I see a big responsibility in making sure that those characters are replaced and trying to get, um, more than anything, just trying to get that. Um, team spirit back that, that we, I don't think we can deny it. we have lost over the last two years. You're now approaching your 10th season with the club, and it's hard to believe. Um, but take us back to the end of 2009-2010, um, you were released from Carlisle United, uh, and uh, to be fair to you and, and to others, it, it must have been tough coming from youth football into men's football. and. In fairness, I think it took you a while to adapt. I think that's uh, more than fair to be honest, Steve. I think I remember my first game for Reds. Um, it was away at Northwich, we were 2 1 down. Um, and myself and Steve Armash come on. Uh, we won 3 2, nothing to do with us. Um, but it was, no, and it was a uh, sort of that back end of the season when we were flying. Um, I, was on, I was on the bench mainly. Um, and it was a uh, yeah, it, it's. Uh, I think anyone coming in will realise it's a steep learning curve. You've got, I, I think, back to uh, what Kyle May, Tony Keg was in Nets, Johnny Wright, Dabba, Hopper, you know, the real hard <laughs> men. And it was a tough team, um, worked worked hard, and were really, I guess, horrible play against it. Me coming in there, uh, a little little timid left winger. Um, it probably did take me a while to yeah. get the, to grips. The with talent's it. obviously there, you know, from people that have, you know, come through that sort of upbringing. I think it's the, the physical aspect that, you know, that probably the biggest hurdle to overcome. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, I'd say personally, Steve, I think, if I'm completely honest, it was the mental aspect for me. I wasn't mentally tough enough, I wasn't immature. Um, I, I, I am quite harsh on myself, but I look back then and it was the 
willingness to do the horrible side of it that then what? Well, I'd say they actually loved that team and I have very fond memories of that team when I was 19. Um, you know, it was coming into a team of men. That, um, but no, it's, I think it helped me in the long run. Um, but no, it's, I don't think there's any doubt that I took a while to uh, get in, and to the point now where I probably enjoy that side of the game and I do genuinely like it sometimes when it gets a bit horrible, but that's uh, a million miles away from where, where my mind was when I first came. Uh, but no, I've, I've been looking back, it, it is strange when you say it like that. <laughs> Come to, 10 seasons, but, uh, I think the lesson though is you, you have to do your time and by that I mean you know you do your stints on the bench and because you're on the bench for months on end you know you don't throw the, the towel in I think that's the uh, you know that's the point to, to make to younger lads coming through doing it you know there's plenty of lads um, come through the same pathway as yourself uh, a good professional upbringing and then into men's football and it does take a while to adapt and it was about that time you, you took a gap year and you went off to the other side of the world. What, uh, yeah. what was that all about? <laughs> yeah, pretty typical uh, career is it, from working in Reds. But yeah. Um, was it beneficial football wise? I mean, it's bound to be yeah. life wise. Uh, life wise, definitely. Um, I think obviously the opportunity came. Steve Hammarsh was looking for um, who I played at Reds with at that time. Was looking for a something new, he went on, he'd sorted out the team and then looked, asked if they knew uh, anyone decent. He didn't know anyone, but then he asked me, because uh, I was struggling, but uh, yeah, so I, no, I went over there and loved it, but I think it, it was massive in that, I think, if I'm honest at that point, my confidence had probably um, taken taking a hip sitting on the bench, because it, it is mentally tough to keep turning up week after week and yeah. you get through on now and then and you, you sort of do like I said a bit of soul searching and it, it, it is mentally tough so but confidence will probably drain so it's good to go and more than anything I think the biggest thing for New Zealand that it did to me was I went over there and I started every game for the team I was one of the main players and that sort of gives me the hunger that ever to be honest Steve, ever since then the, my main priority is just to play every game and I come back and I I personally think uh, I did okay the season I come back under Edmore and um, obviously Neil McDonald coming but I think you've seen then I wasn't prepared to sit on the bench anymore and I went to Penrith um, because I think like I say you play it every week it sort of become and that was my priority and I think it's made me far more willing to do the horrible side of it because whatever I don't care now to be honest if I look good or if I play well as long as I'm playing as long as I feel like I'm contributing and um, so I think more than anything that's what New Zealand did for me just getting used to playing week in week out. So a spell down under and a spell at Penrith and then more or less from when we returned to the Northern Premier League uh, probably under Gavin um, more or less an ever present and, and, and five brilliant seasons from a personal point of view and, and from a club's point of view you know, a, a decent uh, time to be associated with the club. It was, it, it, it all feels a bit raw at the minute still, but I think we will, obviously I have, I have a good relationship still with Dabba um, and Bones and what have you, and I think speaking to them um, in the off-season, I think, I said it's, it's going to be one of the things where you didn't, you didn't really appreciate the time of what we did most weeks, and no. if I'm completely honest, it, it probably, it, as I get older, maybe I'll see the positives of them years. At the minute, it just feels like a massive, a few massive missed opportunities that, because we, we did have great teams, we went on great runs. Uh, you could, you know, we, we just seem to be turned up and winning every week at some points. But um, obviously, the Ilkeston game missed uh, when I feel we were the best team in the league that year. Um, the Salford game, which Two one up, um, with, with an hour gone, um, and then the next year, Stour Bridge, where again I think obviously losing an extra time, but I think that's the over. If I'm completely honest, that's the overriding of missed opportunities, and no. I won't be completely as Danny has sold it. If I, what I got left five years, um, and I think more than anything, I just want to win something. I've never won anything, and that's been a big selling point of Danny. It's been refreshing to be honest that 
bees as determined to win things as I am because it's like I say I don't think I'll ever let them seasons go until unless I do win something in my career. Well you say you haven't won anything but um, you know are reaching playoffs on a regular basis and, and your own portfolio of, of wonderful goals um, your work rate, your skill, your flair all rolled into a, a player that's come through the ranks and, and you know we've, we've seen you all develop and um, you know I think you've been recognised by you know various player of the year awards, players player uh, recognition and then uh, end of that 15-16 season you got in the Premier Division team of the year, they're, they're accolades that um, you know you can reflect on and say well you know I've done okay, I must have done alright. Yeah no I'm obviously very grateful for, for them awards and I think the players play awards me a lot to me it's obviously very proud to be recognised um, by the players in, uh, two or three years um, in a row and yeah they, they, they stick in obviously I take a lot of satisfaction out of that I think yeah well like I say I, I don't want to talk down what we've done what we did over that period because I think we punched up a lot of weight and we were doing very well um, and yeah personally I think it's We've been the best years of my career still, even with that disappointment of not quite making it. We've been the, the were the best years of my career, but I think, like I say, it's probably moving into a new phase of my career in that I was, uh, I was okay just being a good player in the team um, and letting other people lead the team and I was just one of the people that, like I say, I always feel like I did my part, but now it's probably a case of there, there will be some younger players that win and where Gaz and however instilled it into me, um, the work rate right? and I think, that's, I think that it was a bit of a realisation with me that in order to be able to show whatever your ability or you want to score goals and you want to do all that be men but there's got to be the other side of it first to earn that and I think Gaz and that installed it into me and now it's it, like I say, it's, I'm excited to now be in that position of being someone that can um, help help others come on because it, even you know what looking at the squad we've got going in this league, there's a lot of ability in, and it's I think it is just trying to tap into it really and make get them not playing our uh, we know we know people like Scotty Allison and Nate Watson and whatever we know that can produce. Um, and it's just trying to get it on a consistent basis, I think, that, and myself as well. I think the, the seasons you talk about and the awards, if I'm complete, I'm having very harsh on myself. But the last two years, I don't think I have produced glimpses, but not sustained over a, the full season, which is what I need to get back to. So, first and foremost, I need to do it myself and then um, all the. And the rest will follow. Hopefully, yeah. Uh, when you came in, you said you, look, you looked up to the likes of Hopper and and Carl May and Keggy and, and, and these fellas so you know I presume you're happy with the way the squad's been shaped up it's good it's a mixture of youth and experience uh, so there's still some senior players alongside you um, and then the others you know it's up to the senior lads to help them come through it as we all know they're uh, talented kids but as you said yourself it, it takes a while to adapt and adjust it does um, and being completely honest, they're going to have to adapt quicker than I did. It's as simple as that because we haven't got time. And I know um, Dan is very much the same mindset as me. We're, this isn't the season to get used to this league. We're going to, we want to hit the ground running and we need we need to shake off last season. And the people that weren't involved, it'll probably be a bit of a bonus for them. Um, but yeah, they do, we're doing it, we adapt quick, and there's, there's, there's a lot of talent in there. We, I, I've seen it in training every week. Um, for whatever reason it never replicated on the match days on last year but yeah I, don't, I, I do appreciate what you're saying and I agree in terms of helping people on and there'll be an arm around the shoulder here but it's like I put it this way Katie wasn't was never sympathetic to me it was you got told and you, have, you did have to and maybe I didn't adapt quick enough but this year's squad's going to have to because speaking of Danny it's exactly what we need, he's got high standards and this isn't going to be a year for us all just to get to know each other and play a bit of nice football, you know, we need some men out there and um, I 
I don't mean that as you know, smashing people. I mean turning up week in, week out. Um, so yeah, we a lot of talent and we just need to um, really turn that into a winning mentality. Because at the end of the day it's about winning. It's, and that's what we need to get back to. So we, we start training in another month. Do footballers do a bit themselves in the off season? Depends on the footballer, I think. Um, yeah, I, I do. I've started now. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, I've got back to it. Um, it's yeah, I think it's just. I, I think it took me a while to realise, but being fit only helps yourself. It's uh, when you're playing in games and you make better decisions when you you know when you're knackered after an hour um, and when you give the ball away to you because you're tired and you're not fit enough. So it, you do only help yourself. It's easy for that, and in obviously. Everyone's got their own approach to it. I always like to turn up to pre season feeling fit to start with, and then the match fitness can come because you can never replicate that much all the summer. Um, but pre season to an extent to get fit. Um, but I do think you, you start off, we want to hit the ground, and more than anything, I know I'm captain, but I'm not taking anything for granted. I want to be in the team from day one, I want to play every game, and I think everyone else should have the same mentality. If you hit the ground running, have a good pre season, you want to have that shirt on the first game of the season and keep hold of it. I, don't, I think the lads would be doing themselves a disservice if they come to pre season not fit because it's it's exciting and we want to all be part of this and you want to be in the team as much as possible. And catch up. So we kick off in mid August, but um, a big day for you before then, I believe you're, you're getting married. <laughs> yeah, uh, no, it was a bit of a nervous period as to whether I was going to. Miss the first game, but the fixtures got announced, and uh, I'll be back for it. Um, I'm sure my fiance won't mind. I'll be doing a few runs during uh, when we're away. We're away for a couple of weeks um, to get married, sixth of August, I think. Yeah, so uh, yeah, get that out of the way, um, and then can concentrate on the season starting. I think. Connor, congratulations on being appointed captain, and thanks for speaking to the Reds website. Thank you very much.